Carlos, uh, you were talking about, you said you told the chiefs that you're no more interested in illegal mining. Yes. So you want to stop this completely. Uh, how, what are you going to do to sustain yourself and your family? Well, at first, when there is no galamsi, our people live. They use farming to live. Now, I came to Kumasi and started construction. I think not too much, but I'm happy than doing galamsi because uh, the med we are using to do galamsi is med for the water. Mm. Mm. But we call it med. med. Mm. And when, even when a little one enter into your stomach, you can run for the whole day. You see? So I sat down one day and I said, ah, we are doing by to ourselves. I can run out bet with my life. If there is no measure to stop Galamsi in 10 years' time, if Ghana gets um, 10, 100 bars of cocoa the whole year, I will bet with my life. Mm. They should kill me. Do you have any health complications because of your involvement in illegal mining? Health. 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 Like. Health. Are you well? Are you well? Well, as for me, dear, I always uh, take care of myself. But my colleagues, they involve our drugs. Mm. That after one year or two years, you see the effect on them. Like mm. what? Like a young guy. He will take a drugs uh, because of the hard work. Mm. If we see him, he become an old. Sons one, two cannot hold things right. Mm. You see them shivering. Yes. Mm. Sometimes too, you see, the life is not good to be there. But you, you're not sick. Everything is okay. Oh, with everything you is rights. okay. One thing that make me sad. That's 2019. I went to Pristia in Suta. We were doing and When I went there, the, Chin the Chinese are destroying the forest. So we two are following them. The forestry came there. Yeah. yeah. The forestry came there and they, 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 they arrest us. Mm -hmm. We are six people, mm -hmm. and then the Chinese workers to make it ten, and they release the Chinese workers. So 2019, they send us to Pristia Police Station. At first, they send us to the Forestry Commission office, and they ask us to pay 200 cities. And we say that we don't have. So they later, they send it to the police. And then the CID collects 1,500. So first March 2019, since March, I was, still, I was in CES. Then I called my brother, and then he paid the money. So when he paid the money, they should release me for me to go. They say that if the, the rest of the people did not get the money, they will not receive me. And I asked them why. And they said that because if they send them to court, the report say that we are six. Why five people came to the court? And they have to answer that. And then I asked the CID that, why the Chinese are doing that and I'm a Ghanaian? You arrest me and then they leave the Chinese people. And he said that that is Ghana for you. That's what he told you. That is what he told me. Carlos, I want to say thank you so much for joining us on Agenda tonight. But I have mm. one thing to say. Mm. Whether illegal or they are giving them lances, we are all destroying the water mm -hmm. and then the land. Because those who are doing the last key, when they dig the, uh, the pits, pit, mm. and then if the, the dirty water flow into the, the pit they have mining, one week or more, you have to open the dirty water for it to go so that you can get the clean water. When, when we open the dirty water, the dirty water will go straight to the stream. Mm. And me too, I'm doing a small scale. And me too, I'm destroying this, uh, the water. So two of us are destroying the water. So it takes the chiefs. Me, I don't want to involve the security personnel. Why? Because they take bribe. <laughs> Did they ever take bribe from you? Yes. Yeah, exactly. uh, aside yes. from the yes. forestry yes. Aside from the yes. they have collected five million from me when they came for my pumping machine. Mm -hmm. Wait, old Ghana city, old cities, yeah. five million. Yeah. Five, or you mean yes. five hundred Ghana cities? Five hundred Ghana cities. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. When they came, we were doing galam and they, they came and arrested and they correct my pumping machine. And they started from thousand. I said, I don't have thousand. And that time mm -hmm. I have one sponsor and then he came and paid 500. The community police, that he came with the policemen and then come, came for my pumping machine. Now he is doing, even he want to buy my land, the land I bought, he want to buy it. <laughs> I have his number. That is why I say I can give my, the numbers to you. Then you pretend you want to do Galamsey. I have the chiefs. I have the prominent people who are doing that. Carlos. So the government should put an end to all the Galamsey. And then they look at it again. How we can do it so I, successfully so that there are water bodies. That is why I said within 10 years, we will not get food to eat. You will not get water to drink, and you will not get cocoa to export. Carlos, thank you so much for joining us on Agenda uh, thank tonight. You. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Carlos, get in applause there. Please have a seat. Mm -hmm. uh, Carlos, please Ciao. sit down. Ciao. Yes, sit down for us. And uh, we're, you're still here on Agenda. Uh, Carlos, receiving applause there. But when we come back, you recall that in 2021, the government launched and it was actually launched by the president the national alternative employment and livelihood program for illegal miners what happened to that what has been the success of that and how do we look around it and other other measures to ensure that we are able to give these illegal miners sustainable uh, lifestyles moving forward don't go away stay with us And you're watching Agenda on TV3, you're welcome back. We're talking about beyond the military deployment, what is next in this fight against illegal mining and ensuring that we are having a sustainable economic activity in this country. You just heard Carlos giving us those details. Uh, well, you watched him as well, giving us those details uh, because he's been involved in illegal mining. But we want to look at the alternative ways and measures moving forward. It doesn't look like we've really made a lot of gains trying to get people off our lands and water bodies. Because you're looking at over 1 million people, illegal miners, estimation, who are involved in this. And yet you're looking at 80,000 per the, the, the figure giving us. Well, the question, of course, is that <clears throat> some of these data are thrown around. <laughs> and oftentimes I'm suspicious as to how real they are. Of which one? The one million or the one on the website? No, I'm just talking mm. about data. Oh. Data in general. In Ghana, we just like to play around with figures. I'm not a statistician, so <laughs> I cannot claim any expertise. But when you look at the reality, it was then that you begin to ask yourself, is this really true? The issue is that how, who has monitored and recorded all these who are supposed to be allegedly involved in illegal money? That's one. Number two, what step are you taking in relation to them, either individually or possibly group-wise? Because I think this is more of a group issue than individual. And so if you have that data, then you have to try and find out what is the alternative employment that you are talking about. My view has always been that we are, God has given us very fertile land. And this fertile land, if you see the amount of food that we import, you ask yourself, why? Why are we importing so much food? Why can we not produce those food? I was a Christian uh, Hi. high on Saturday because I'm the chairman of the Board of Trustees. And I remember Professor Steve Adais saying that they give them six, six meals, is it? Six meals in a day. And that at lunchtime they make sure that the food they eat are indigenous food that's produced in Ghana. And I was excited to hear him say that. Because when you go to the shops and you will see all what is displayed, you even go to uh, Makola 
and uh, these other markets. You see that much of what is there is imported products that are being sold. But I was in, uh, uh, I was in Turkey in June. And I, you go to the shops, and it's amazing to see the shops are full. But look at the label of each of the products which is there. It is from Turkey. From Turkey. You will even see electronic products and the rest on them. They are made in Turkey. So I was asking myself, if Turkey can do it, why can Ghana also not do it? Because now we're talking about these lands that they are devastating and polluting. Now, the amount of food that those, that land can produce can feed us so that we don't import a single item. We can even be able to export some of them. You know, Kenya exports flowers to Europe mm -hmm. regularly. But they also export okra, peppers, and the other things. Now, the climate here is the same as that one there. So I've always looked at a crab plains eh? from here to Adan. Every time I drive there, I go crazy because I ask myself, I said, ah, the Volta River is here. If we irrigate the crop plains, we can be producing peppers, okra, uh, 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 tomatoes, and the rest of them. And we can harvest them in the morning. They will be at Kotoka in the afternoon. In the evening, they are flown to Paris, Berlin, London. And in the morning, it is on the market there. No refrigeration required. And the people, they prefer to eat what? Fresh, 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 fresh food. That can bring in billions of dollars to our country. So the question I kept asking myself is that, am I, in fact, sometimes I tell my colleagues that I'm, uh, I know that I'm the only madman around <laughs> because the kind of ideas that come into my, my head, whether they themselves don't see it. So uh, I just want to understand exactly what you're saying, that perhaps this time there's a need to reclaim as much lands as possible just so we can grow these to make extra money. Is that, in fact, is that the point? Yeah, exactly. In fact, the truth is that they are selling the cocoa, the chiefs are selling the cocoa farms and giving it to the, these Chinese to do galamse on them. Prof, how do you think we can, what kind of alternative measures do we need? But first of all, how do we make this national alternative employment and livelihood program for illegal miners that was initiated in 2021? How do we make it work effectively? First of all, I don't think that the alternative employment should be only for the miners. At the end of the day, I mean, the economy should be much more employment intensive. And that means that the whole economic system if you have the situation whereby you go and borrow money at 35 percent and above, and so there's a, a bigger economic issues which are not being addressed. But let me quickly say that nobody can say I am doing illegality because I'm poor. Mm -hmm. If we go along that trajectory, we are in trouble. Then we are actually legalizing evil and the only reason is that I don't have a job, I can do whatever. So let us be very careful about that. Number two, let me step back. I think that we have chiefs which are giving these lands, paramount chiefs, can be gazetted. People don't know that to be a paramount chief in Ghana, the government should gazette you. And I think that we must be very serious about this. And also, when we are talking about, so long as the young people are finding that it's much more profitable, they are likely to go into it. But what is needed is not so-called an agency of alternative, but rather creating 
an enabling environment because you mentioned about 80,000. Mm. We are talking about 2 million you mentioned, or, exactly. which even the figures are wrong. Mm. So it is not these quote-unquote political, uh, you know, groups, which all of them have it. They used to call it youth employment before. Agency. Agency and other things. It just meant to satisfy the, the, the boys that follow them. It's not the one that is providing employment for the people in uh, Wasa Kropon, Amenfi, and other things. Those require a different strategy, which is much more broader, and which is incentive-based, one which allows you to access credit easily. But let us not also say that, oh, they can do whatever they want to do because these things are not forthcoming. I just want to get clarity on the chief and the gazetting bit you mentioned. Yes. What did you mean by that? What I'm saying is that national must be distilled. Yes. Every chief okay. must be And they can be distilled, yeah. not necessarily. We don't wait for Asante Hine. No. The government has an instrument of recognizing a chief, fortunately or unfortunately. And if you go to some of the places and somebody sits there and say he's a chief, this is where we must direct, as you're saying, we must now direct our attention to the chiefs, to the DCEs, to the security coordinators who are there, the MPs, because unless we deal with them, we are not going to solve because they will go and come and be hypocritical. And let me say lastly, I think that at least for the water bodies and the forest, all the presidential candidates must be forced to That's declare, right. declare yeah. that they support that all our water bodies and forests are no-go areas yeah, yeah. and nobody should take a political advantage right. of it. Mm. Let me get your word on mm. really the alternatives moving forward. Yeah, yeah well, but, but back on the water body, it will not even be a law, I mean yeah. like... It, it is what the law says. The law it, is there. there. Yes, it is there. The law is there. So, so, so I agree. I'm just agreeing with yeah. you. But back to the question of alternative. I've been involved in the mining industry for some, for some time. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been at the operations level and then moving to corporate and all that. But I, I, have, I have grown some revulsion for alternative livelihood mm -hmm. projects, alternatives. Because when somebody is in a mine in the Galamse and gets 200 cities a day, mm -hmm. What alternative okay, would be to, for him, for him to, to do? Right. You know, and, and uh, you need to define your target mm. of the alternative. That's right. In my particular experiment, uh, when I was working I, as a younger person, we realized that the alternative only favored women yeah. who were actually carrying burden, mm. and they would have to drink analgesics every day. And so, so uh, doing the oil palm thing for them, to, where they were happy. Yeah, but the core people in the Galamse, they're you know doing the farming thing, whose you know if you com the comparative uh, returns are lower, they won't they, they won't, won't do it. it. It has never succeeded. I have seen it myself. I've been involved in creating. When I was at the commission, we created 37 hectare, hectares or so of oil palm in Bogosu Pristia area. Ask me how many Galamse have stopped because of that. Mm -hmm. No. And, and you know, we do it for them. Typical, I mean, say, okay, bring your land and we provide you with almost everything. But those who are in the core, they won't. I was involved in a pro project in the Awudia, a, a place called Awudia. Go Fills, at that time I was working for them. It was a, a $20 million project. They wanted to, you know, create an, a, a proper, uh, what do you call it, the, the value addition okay. to, to, to this uh, 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 product. You know, we went to the farm, we went to the people and said, bring your, far, bring your land, we'll do everything for you. We'll pay you to do your work. Every day we'll pay you. And the young guy said, oh, look, man, uh, we have something else to do. <laughs> now, before we realized, people had built, because they had heard uh, Grofield was coming to do this big project. Okay. People had come to build a metropolis there with, because they were expecting Compensation. Compensation. Okay. So okay. we did the analysis again, and the project that we are going to invest 20 million, the cost was 19 million in compensation. Then the, my, my, my people said, no way. Enough is enough. Let me get your, your final word in about 40 seconds, and I'll give mm. the rest of the time to uh, council and then Professor Stephen. Yes, I, I think we are in a very serious crisis, and I think there must be a genuine effort to bring everybody on board. 
You see, I think one of the problems is that there hasn't been a genuine effort to bring everybody on board. So uh, what has been done in the past, we don't even review to say this is how we got, we got the result we got and this is how much we are going to do. So I think we must see it as a national crisis, particularly the water bodies. Yeah. There's no way we should allow people to pollute the water bodies because mercury, Mercury is a liquid metal. That's right. It's a metal. It's, even though it's liquid, it's it a metal. metal. It doesn't degrade. No. When it gets to you, what it is, that is what it is. Yeah. And we have, the doctors have, have, have told us horrible right. impact of mercury. So that should, that should advise us. Mm -hmm.